Can you give us any <clears throat> insight on that workout and what you saw in Kobe? Yeah, what what wowed you there? Well, I think the you know I think the one thing and you remember he did not play basketball here in the states until he got to high school. Mm -hmm. He went to Italy with his father, professional player. And when he went over there, he was, you know, he all of a sudden he becomes a linguist. Oh, you think he spoke at least three languages. Mm -hmm. And it's a different lifestyle over there, completely different. And when he came back here, all of a sudden he had been playing against all these kids over there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he was unbelievably skilled. His work ethic, second to none. Uh, he wasn't afraid of anything. And it was genuine. It's mm -hmm. not verbiage right i saw a film on him eventually the uh, arn tell who had uh who was an agent here in town now he runs a pistons um he was his joe his dad was his arn was arn tell was joe's dad's agent mm -hmm. and so kobe started hanging around here in this country and all of a sudden you know people were shouting out at him you're going to, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, thought New Jersey was going to draft him. And Arn told him he can't play back here. Now, here's an agent's influence. And he said he can't play back here. And why can't he play back here? We don't want him to play with all this pressure around here. Mm -hmm. Gets in the draft. I offered him, I offered the first ten pick in the draft for Vlade Divac, who was a very good center mm -hmm. and someone you want to play with. And everyone thought there was something wrong with him. Um, so one through 13, they passed on him during the draft. I talked to these people for three weeks. It was almost like begging them. Because the big prize in the deal, we thought we might have a chance to sign Shaquille O'Neal, never knowing that we would get him. And well, so when we got them, Paul, it was, it was a, like a two-fold message you're sending. First of all, it's about improving your team greatly. And then the financial wherewithal changed the dynamics to this franchise. And Jerry Buss, the late Jerry Buss, who was the owner of the Lakers, he, he had a different seating arrangement that's still in place in this league. Different prices to see different players. That's where all this stuff started with him when we got those two. But it was like, uh, to watch him work out, it was like ridiculous. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, he was like a man, he was like a man playing against kindergarten people. That's mm -hmm. how advanced he was. Mm -hmm. And he was he was versatile. He was versatile, but he was a furious, ferocious defender. He was that's all he did. He wanted to compete. Mm -hmm. He went down. To, we were going to training camp. His first training camp, he, you cannot sign a contract here in Los Angeles unless you're 18 years old. It has to do with uh, movie, the movie industry. And, right. and so he couldn't even sign a contract. <laughs> and he would tell me, I said, what are you doing this week? You know, I'm going to go play ball here. I said, hey, I said, Kobe, why don't you do this indoors? Don't go out. <laughs> Get a call from a trainer. He'd broken his wrist playing down at Venice Beach. So he missed training camp. You go over in training camp, you watch him, and it's like, you, you almost felt you had to strap him down. He he could not sit down. <laughs> yeah. Could not. Kobe. <laughs> and so he had a chance to develop his left hand over there. Okay. Um, but he was just one of those guys that, again, size, you two guys stand side by side, you might be a touch taller, or pretty close. Mm -hmm. But he just he was just a natural player who, um, when he was born – there was a heck of a lot of gold dust sprinkled on this. <laughs> a lot. A lot of gold dust. And he did not disappoint. He played every night. You didn't have to ask him to play hard. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Uh -uh. That's just what he brought. Um, rest in peace to, to the great Kobe Bryant. What's a story from Kobe that you'll always cherish? You know, there's a lot of things that went on in his life that, that I don't feel comfortable talking about. And I think the thing that made me – feel like there was a real trust here with him. When I was working in Memphis, I'd get calls. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And, you know, I guess in some sense that might have been tampering. I didn't look at tampering because he was he was at our house all the time. He ate at my house all the time. I felt more like a, a father figure with him. And we'd talk about it and started talking about things. And I said, well, Kobe, I said, look, 
I said, first of all, you know, you put yourself in jeopardy here, okay? You have to look at yourself first. Don't blame anyone else. Exactly. But look, look, look what you need to do a little bit better. And so it became more and more of a trust issue. He became a free agent, okay? And he called me. And his agent then was Rob Palenka. And so I met them in Orange County in a hotel room. And he said he wanted to come to Memphis and play mm, basketball. Really? That's great. And I looked at him. I said, <laughs> never. you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no. And I said, Kobe, no, no. Uh, you know, it's just you belong somewhere out here. Mm -hmm. Okay, You belong somewhere out here. And even though he would have never played there, I just That's wanted easy. to reassure him that don't feel like – you have any obligation with me or the Grizzlies to play here. And because he would have never played there, it wasn't going to happen. And I, I just got to know him that well. And, you know, we would, we would communicate a little bit, not a lot, because I, I do believe in sanctuary of a contract. And um, it's just someone that I really like personally. But he, would, he got to be tough, okay, very dif difficult. Yeah. And – I remember one day uh, he wanted to ch challenge Shaquille O'Neal, <laughs> and I'm. I said, "Are you crazy or not?" I said, "This big dude, you know, <laughs> gonna eat you. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Leave this big dude alone." <laughs> but I had a wonderful relationship with him. Forget it. Forget it. As a basketball player, mm. I love what he stood for. His commitment to excellence. Uh, his commitment to not be afraid to go up there and lead. He wasn't afraid of failing. Once you get afraid of failing, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. He was not afraid. Mm -hmm. mm, once you get afraid of failing, you're going to fail. I love that. Oh, that's awesome. I like this yeah. tattoo. I want <laughs> yeah. tattoo right there. Once, once you're afraid, once you're to, afraid fail, to fail, you, fail, you will fail. fail. You will fail. I like that. I just want to follow up on, on Kobe to Memphis. There was a, there was a slight possibility Kobe would have went to Memphis. Because we hear about him no, possibly I, he, looking he, at he, Chicago. I just don't think that that would have happened because you had to look at his life. He was different. He was going to be more successful outside of basketball, okay? He had a – it's almost mentally he had a script in his mind that this is what I'm going to do. And he was gifted in a lot of areas, okay? It wasn't, you know, physically obviously off the charts. Yeah. But mentally he was gifted. Yeah. And he had took this incredible interest – and women, uh, he was going to make a difference in a lot of those kids' lives. Mm -hmm. And he was just uniquely different. Um, as I say, I wonder where, you know, where his, what would have been, what would have been the highlight of his life as a player? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, when he walked away from the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what is, is so tough to, to understand or come to grips to is, with how he approached basketball, just how he was going to approach life in that, that next phase. Like, you right. know, uh, I was looking forward as a fan and, you <clears> know, <throat> as a little brother to his, I became really close to him right. uh, the the year of his passing. So, you know, I was all into what's next. Like, what are you going to do next? And you, you saw the short stories and him publishing books. And Remember where you were the day he died? Oscar. Mm -hmm. I do. I do. It was in Orlando. I was... Sitting in my house in Los Angeles, and I was reading the Sunday newspaper, setting it was a rainy, kind of a rainy, overcast day, not a lot, just drizzly. And I did a call and said, Did you hear about this helicopter crash? I said, No. I said, Helicopter crash? Yeah. Well, we think it's Kobe Bryant's helicopter that he flies in. I said, oh, my God, he wouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, that evening, um, I was pretty worn out. I really was. It was like, no, this can't happen. Mm -hmm. And if you've gone that way, it's if they were just five minutes, nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. And, you know, the th the ugly parts of it that came out, the lawsuits, mm -hmm. Um my God, it's so tragic. How can he even want to bring it up again? Right. Um, but it was uh, in my house. 
um, in a family room. We have a, I have a bowl there, and there's a picture of him with Gianna on the sideline of a Laker game. She got her head on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Now, that's been there since he's passed away. Mm-hmm. And there's little things around my house that uh, most people would look at, and they would say, no, uh, you don't. Why would you keep that around? Mm-hmm. Because I believe in people, and I particularly believed in him when you know, we get him here showboat uh never forget uh in a playoffs we're playing utah no one else would even look we were awful no one else would even take a shot he wasn't afraid didn't make him somebody said to me that's just absolutely awful it wasn't funny at all Mm -hmm. i said watch what happens next year great Mm -hmm. i said watch that happen next year Mm -hmm. but he was you know he, he was just just wired different too easy to miss in him too easy yeah too easy. Jackie, we're in the middle of the NBA Finals. What do you got cooking on prize picks? Man, it's a tight series, so I don't know. I think I'm going to roll with the, the uh, uh, Gabe, Vincent, and KCP, man. But wait, tell the people what prize picks is. So prize picks is a daily fantasy app. You pick two to six players, like the video on your screen. Then you pick if they will have more or less than their prize picks projection. You're not competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Oh, Look, 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 I know how much I just won, but wait, tell the people how much they can win on prize picks. So you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And on top of that, all first time users that deposit using our promo code podcast P will receive a hundred percent instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That mean if you deposit $20, prize picks will give you $20. If you deposit a hundred dollars, prize picks will give you a hundred dollars. And all I got to say, like I always do. Cha-ching! Cha-ching!